Hi, I'm Shelley Quinn, and we welcome you to the second hour of 3ABN Live. We're having a good time tonight, and let me reintroduce our special guest. Uh, first, we're talking about the Thunder in the Holy Land project. That was our first hour, and how we're getting into the concept of discipleship and how each one of us need to be personally involved. And I want to challenge you, we all challenge you, to take this seriously because when Jesus gave the gospel. He didn't just mean for pastors to go out. Pastors were actually to equip the members so that the members could go out. And it should be personal evangelism. And this is a wonderful tool, the Thunder in the Holy Land Project. But we're going to be talking in the second hour a little bit more about the biblical principles of discipleship. And uh, one of our special guests kind of teased us with some very fascinating ideas before we went to break and that was that you have some ideas that no, most people don't know about that are from about Jesus' teachings. Let me reintroduce you. Charles Bird, president of Questline Productions and uh, Papa, I should say, of Thunder in the Holy Land Project. Welcome back. And Stephen Haley, who is the president of the Kentucky Tennessee Conference. And then we have with us Pastor, I should call you Doctor, and Melvin Santos, and we welcome you back as well. Okay. Pastor, your church is in Nashville, Tennessee? Nash yes, correct. Nashville, yes. Tennessee. Okay, and you are the liaison for? The ministerial field liaison for the North American Division on discipleship. discipleship. That's exciting, and we're going to talk about this more. This is a live program, which is <laughs> obvious. Obviously, we were talking earlier about sometimes when you haven't done one for a while, and I've been out for a while, it's amazing how, how twisted your tongue can become. And you can't cover that up on the live, can you? <laughs> but right. we want to encourage you, if you have any questions during this time, you can call us at 618-627-4651, or you can email us at live at 3abn.org. Or if you're interested in our free offer for tonight, which is a DVD of the first interview that we did with you all on the Thunder Project, uh, this was done. Uh, this was done in, two, in 2012, I believe. It was last year, wasn't it, that yeah. you all were here? And I know we had a fascinating discussion that night. Charles, what do you mean that you, as a pastor? found some things that you didn't even realize that Jesus had taught when you were doing this particular program? Well, if we're going to jump right there, let's do it. Here's the question that I have to ask myself and the viewing audience. Can a person be saved without sharing their faith? Hmm. Is witnessing a salvific issue? I'm, I, you're not going to bait me here. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything until you talk now because you, <laughs> you set this up. <laughs> well, I, 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 was, I was really amazed when in going through the Bible, I found out that Jesus made it absolutely clear in Matthew 3, 9. He said, Think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. Uh, God is able uh, uh, to, to have children from rocks, you know. Right. He can do whatever he wants. But then this statement was made, uh, actually, I believe this one uh, is, is the most profound statement of it all. He says, the tree that doesn't bear fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. What is that talking about? Hmm. You know, it, it, I lived in Yakima, which is orchard country, and they'll cut down trees for the slightest of reasons. No one's buying that brand of apple anymore. It's the best tasting apple in the world, but they're buying this, so we, they cut them down. But if they're not bearing fruit, I can assure you they get plowed down and something else gets put in its place. Okay. So, so God is calling us, and Jesus said this, if you're not gathering with me, you're scattering. Mm -hmm. And when I read that for the, for the first time with the eyes of Jesus, who came to this earth because... He was doing His Father's will to save lost humanity. And now He's calling us to be a part of that process. He says, you're either gathering with me or scattering with me. So I asked churches, and I've spoken to many, many churches. I said, how many of you have won someone to Jesus in the last 12 months? No hands, or maybe one. Mm -hmm. Okay, two years. Let's be generous. Five, ten. <laughs> 
And then we wonder why we're losing our children. That's true. They're not seeing the miracles that God wants to do. They're not seeing God do the miraculous. And I can assure you, if you put yourself out on the front line where you're being shot at by all the uh, darts of the enemy who doesn't want you to share the love of Jesus, the devil's going to attack you. And then God has to step in and do the miraculous, like knock down prisons and, and walk on water and multiply <laughs> loaves and fishes. Those aren't just Bible stories. No. And if our children could go with us to the hospital and watch us put our hands on somebody and pray over them, if, if they could watch the light come on in a, in a prisoner's eyes and say, this is true. I, never knew, I wouldn't be in jail if I'd known this. Mm -hmm. If they could see that, Hollywood cannot compete with that. That's true. I, I have to, you made me uneasy though, I have to ask you a Good. question. I love it. Because, too. see, I don't think that we can say, I, and I don't know that you're intending to say this, that witnessing is a salvif salvific issue in that we're saved by grace. Of course. So it's not that we have to witness to be saved, but I believe if we are saved and we're filled with the Spirit, that when we are filled with the love of God, we're going to want to witness. This is my, my big thing right now is 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 and 13, that Paul says that he's praying that God will cause them to increase and abound in love mm -hmm. so that they may be perfected in holiness mm -hmm. at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we're filled with, if God is shedding his love abroad into our hearts, mm -hmm. we will love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We will love one another as we love ourselves. And I do look back to the Old Testament that, you know, if you're not warning them, the blood's on your hand. I mean, if you know somebody's heading toward, it's like, I think about that scripture sometime. It's that, right. you know, my next door neighbor, I love them. Have I told them about Jesus? Mm -hmm. If I don't warn them and, and I don't know that they know, then uh, really is God holding me responsible because I'm not really evidencing the love of God. So there is that part, but you didn't mean to imply that. You're saved by sharing? Yes. Yeah, I did. And let me tell you why. Aha. Uh -huh. Let okay. me tell you why. If it never comes out of your mouth how good God is, you don't believe it which means you're, you're not allowing him to live through you. So God says, I want to breathe on you and I want to fill you with my presence. I want to fill you with my love and my grace. Mm -hmm. And if you drink a glass of water and you breathe, that part of that glass of water comes back out. It just, it's just like you said, if you have it, it's got to come out. But if you're not allowing Jesus to come out, you're killing yourself spiritually. And, and I've seen this happen so many times. I'm a pastor. You're the Dead Sea. They're the Dead Sea. Okay. So you can Let's say, well, they saying. got water. Okay. Yeah, but. It's, it's the, live, the source of living water that is coming in. And if you don't allow it to move out, you become like the Dead Sea. Because love is by definition cyclical. Yes, absolutely. Love has to give to be love. Okay. It can't just take to be love. That's you have right. to give it to be love. So God loves us. And then he says, would you give that love to somebody else? Well, then I'll lose all that love. No, I'll give you more. Mm, okay. And so we have to keep it. And it's part of that salvific circular cycle where how many church members are dying spiritually? Oh, they, they show up for church, but there's no joy. Yeah. There's no life of Christ. Amen. And I can see Mel. Mel. No, I'm, I'm anxious to share the Doctor, this. you're just anxious to share. You know, Jesus uh, summarized it well in John chapter 15 about abiding in Him, mm -hmm. abiding yeah. in the branch, I mean yep. the branch being connected to the vine. And this is where a person does not focus on the bearing of the fruit, That's right. he focuses on Stunk. abiding in Jesus, Amen. being connected with Him. And once you focus on the connection with Jesus, that you stay uh, connected with Him, John, the whole chapter of John 15 talks about Jesus saying, then you will bear fruits. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, uh, your fruits, you will see them. In fact, it is discussed in chapter 15 that the fruits, what, what can that be? Well, the fruit of the Spirit in you and the fruit of discipleship that you mm -hmm. bring people to Jesus also. So I, I, I like to, to say that Jesus 
fo refocuses us, not necessarily just some, are you bearing fruit or not, do I have fruits, but am I connected with Jesus? And once you have that, mm -hmm. then the, the bearing of the fruit will be easier. Be, the, the, the branch doesn't think, oh, I need to bear fruit. It just bears fruit because it's connected. Absolutely. And that living, the living sap, uh, That's which right. is, I call it, the Spirit's anointing power. Yes. That's exactly. Yes. It, it is an important topic, obviously, because it, it just fundamentally goes to the reason we exist. Um, which is to extend, I, I believe, the kingdom of God. And in the context of the message entrusted specifically to Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, we give the trumpet a, a certain note mm -hmm. when we sound it from the walls of Zion. But we were discussing this on our, on our way up. And interestingly, I'm presently in a, uh, an area of study for my own doctoral program that uh, started out focusing on uh, a, a desire to see ch churches respond uh, in obedience to the Great Commission of Christ, which is to go therefore, make disciples of all nations, and uh, I think uh, the, the Gospel of Luke says, preach the Gospel to everyone, and then the end will come. And, and so, in the context of that Great Commission, I've asked myself, and I'm sure Pastor Santos and Charles has as well, why is it that it seems there are so very few uh, members of God's church that are invested in, in, the, uh, in the art, the science, the joy of soul winning and witnessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've said to myself, and it's actually uh, uh, been a part, of, as I said, of my own doctoral research, the project that I'm in, uh, what compels and motivates someone to want to be invested in soul winning? And uh, there are texts, some of which you share, there's a lot of others where Jesus really commands us to be about the work of winning others. Mm -hmm. But I'm not convinced that people aren't engaged in it because uh, a lack of tools, there are a lot of them, and this is going to be a great new one that we're adding to the arsenal. And I, I'm not necessarily convinced that it's because uh, they're, they're not trained. That could be true. Um, and I'm not sure it's even because they don't have some level of interest. But I do believe, and Shelley, you mentioned it earlier, you said the great commandment to love the Lord your God yeah. with your yeah. heart, your mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. When I started my doctoral research, it was uh, the idea that was in my own mind to help struggling churches in Kentucky, Tennessee uh, be in alignment with the Great Commission. Go and Amen. do it. And then uh, the, the dean of the seminary challenged me, and he said, you know, um, what would convince people to be obedient to the Great Commission? What's going to motivate them? And I thought, well, some Bible texts are great. Get some thinking. And, and Jesus said, do it. And he said, you know, maybe you should return to, to the Great Commandment as the starting point Amen. which motivates yeah. and grows Amen. and moves people to want to do this, to love the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not sure how to do that, except I believe it's a supernatural event when we ask God to give us a loving heart and a desire to actually reach out and uh, maybe move off of our, our, our apathy <laughs> and engage in this. And maybe it starts with a true, genuine, authentic love for lost people. And that doesn't come natural to most, but it's something God can give. And that, you know, I believe that's what Romans 5.5, 5, when he says that God sheds abroad or pours out his love into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't think he's just talking about, oh, well, wait, we can enjoy God's love and know we have assurance of salvation. I think he's saying that when the Spirit of God, if he, if he is God, God is love, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of love. When he's abiding in us, right. when God pours right. out his love into us, then he's the one that enables us to love him with all of our heart, soul, That's mind, right. and strength. And to That's love right. our neighbor as ourself. In the Peanuts yeah. comic strip, Lioness makes the comment one place. He says, he says, I love humanity. It's people I can't stand. <laughs> and I think that S Steve, from, from my experience, hit the nail on the head. Amen. I had to pray, Lord, I, I probably don't love people. I'm more in love with me, my little petty whatever. And, and I have been praying for years now, Lord, make me a soul winner. Amen. Lord, make me a soul winner. And it's amazing what happens when you pray that prayer. And, and, and I, I wish our listening audience would get this. When you pray that kind of a prayer and, and you're ready to give a Bible study, and this isn't the only Bible study you can give. You know, you, people can write them in the flies of their Bible or they can get some, you know, amazing facts folders or whatever. It, this isn't the only way. This is a great way. But it's not the only way. But if you're ready at a moment's notice to share the love of Jesus and you're saying, Lord, make me a soul winner. Give me someone for you. 
Let me share your love with, us, with a, a thirsty, hungry soul. God will make connections that will amaze you. The lady in the park, the, the guy at the gas station, the, the, the family member who's been antagonistic to everything faith related. When you start praying that kind of a prayer and then they say, I want a Bible study on this. And you say, okay, come on over. Yeah. I, I'm ready right now. It's good. It's good. And Dr. Santos. One of the things that I think um, Jesus really spelled it out properly when he gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 19, he says, Go therefore and make disciples. That word disciple in Greek is called mathetuo. And there's two definitions given to that. The primary definition, number one definition is number one, be a disciple first. And number two, be a discipler. Where we miss the boat here is that we tell our people, our leaders, go be a disciple first, but you know, you have to be a disciple of Jesus first. Yes. Be a follower with Jesus. Be connected with Him. In fact, what Jesus was telling the woman in John uh, chapter 4, if you drink from this living water, yeah. you will have you'll have a fountain of water, the source that will be in you, it will be to overflowing. Amen. And and also what Jesus said in John 7 is that you will be like rivers of water. See, the problem is we're trying to give them a cup when, when the source of the power from the Holy Spirit and Jesus has to be in us by Number one, be a disciple for it. Be a devoted, be a committed disciple of Jesus. And when you're doing that, you're committed to Jesus Christ as a disciple, then the Holy Spirit transforms us inside and then re reprioritize our agenda, our lifestyle, so we can be disciples. So therefore, you don't even have to, 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 uh, encourage someone to become a soul winner because there's they're like fountains of water from exactly. the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. They're bubbling with joy <laughs> and love of the Holy Spirit. This is what happened in the New Testament. And so this is where I want for our viewers to understand. It's make sure, be a disciple first of Jesus and then be a discipler. Let's get that priority correct there. Otherwise, we'll be working so hard on our own powers and Jesus said in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah, you know, going back to 1 Thessalonians 3.12, I think when he said that if, when we're abounding in love, this is how God perfects us in holiness. That's right. That's right. I think it's interesting that some of us become like Simon the leper, you know, when he had the feast for Jesus six days before the Passover. And... It, here comes Mary in to humbly be at the feet of Jesus behind him to, I'm sure she didn't plan to start bawling like she did because she didn't have a towel with her and she had a pretty good plan other than that. <laughs> and then she breaks the alabaster box and Simon's just sitting there judging her. But you know what? He didn't realize when Jesus said in John 7, 47 that those who love much or have been forgiven much love much. I think part of the reason that we aren't as in love with Jesus as we should be is we have forgotten how much mm. He has, how much He's forgiven us. That's right. You know, we begin to think we're good. We begin to think that, well, uh, I had a lady tell me, you know, I don't understand why Jesus had to die for me. I've been an Adventist all my life. Uh, I keep the commandments and you're thinking, what? <laughs> we forget who yeah. we are. And if we would really understand what God has done for us, yes. oh my goodness, we'd be like Mary at His feet. Yeah. It, it may indeed be the, the best possible thing for us and certainly others to be much more engaged in, in, in ministering to others and in our feeble efforts, but blessed by God, attempting to lead them closer to, to the one we love and adore. And in so doing, we may find in the end, the soul we save is ourselves. Absolutely. Along with others. It's because we come to the end of ourselves very quickly when we try to share Jesus. <laughs> we come to the end of ourselves and we say, God, you gotta step in here, I, I can't do this. 
and that's a powerful thing. Looks like you got some. I or do. I've got this is from Ray Chris, uh, and he says Chuck Coley is the pastor of our church. Three years ago, he invited us to accompany him, and, and Chuck Coley is the one who actually inspired this method uh, and gave you the idea for this series. Um, he invited us to accompany him as he gave a Bible study. We saw how easy it is to give a DVD Bible study, so didn't hesitate when he asked us a few weeks later to take over the Bible studies with this individual. We presented Pastor Coley's studies for several weeks, and the gentleman we presented them to was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Over the next few months, we gave the studies to three others, and all three of them were baptized. Mm -hmm. We had never given Bible studies before and didn't have a clue as to how to go about doing it. But with this system, it's not only easy but fun. Now, that's, that's that is quite a testimony, and that mm -hmm. is from Ray and Gail Kress in Wisconsin, and we want to thank you all for writing in. Absolutely. And then we have one here that... Um, uh, Dave is, doesn't say where Dave's from, but he just said, I appreciate all your hard work. Love the way you've incorporated the youth in this project. I'm a supporter of yours and love how you have such a good influence on all different denominations. Keep up the good work. Mm. So we are live tonight, and I know that we haven't perhaps given uh, you a lot of things that you could question, but if you have a comment or if you want to know more about this, please do give us a call at 618-627-4651 or you can write your comments to live at 3abn.org or if you would like our free offer, which is the original, I'm, I'm sitting on it, I think. <laughs> anyway, it is the original DVD of our, the first interview that we did. You can contact us at free offer at 3abn.org. It is amazing. You know, I just got a phone call from somebody that I, uh, I, I can quote because I've quoted her all my life and it's my own mother. <laughs> she uh, supported this project. We sent her a set. She opened it up and she went through the whole list of, uh, of uh, topics. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she, when she pulled that out, she decided to watch the one on the Spirit of Prophecy first. Mm -hmm. And as she watched that, she said, you know, she said, I have never seen the Spirit of Prophecy presented this way before. And she said, I've never heard this concept like that. And then I was able to tell her that was Levi who wrote that script. Amen. That was Levi's yeah. study, deep study that he did, profound insights. And I'd tell you what they were, but I'm just going to let you watch it on here. Okay. Well, and how old is Levi? I don't know. I don't even know how old I am. <laughs> he's, he's in his early 20s. Early All of our 20s. young people were in their early 20s. You know, I've met Andrea personally mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to visit with her. And such a godly young woman. You just, God really blessed you. Okay, we've got some more questions here. Mark from Texas is saying, Charles Baird said if an evangelist or layman wanted to be filmed, they could record in a studio. And where would we go to record it? And how much would it cost? Uh, Two million dollars. <laughs> No, the, uh, this is one of the things that I'm so thankful for. Kentucky, Tennessee Conference, they asked me to come down there with the idea that they would get first grab at this, and they have. Um, uh, and so they gave us office space. They were going to give us two. We've taken over three. <laughs> and, and then they were going to give us a corner of one of their conference rooms. We took over the whole room. So they have been very kind and very generous. So our, our studio right now is in the Kentucky, Tennessee Conference Office. Uh, we do have now a team of Adventist young people who, if a conference comes on board and says, we want to, to, to do this for our pastors, then the team can go remotely to a location of the conference's choosing that's suitable for video production. So, so that's also a possibility. If an individual wants to do it, it's $8,000. Some people have said to me, who don't know anything about video production, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. Uh, my comeback has been this. Uh, video production costs out there, you know, the kind that you're seeing on Thunder, about $1,000 a finished minute. So even if we cut this down to a quarter, it would still be thousands of dollars, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this is, this is cheap. Uh, this is very inexpensive, and you get a lifetime, which I don't have. 
just let somebody try to do an event. That's and, right. And by the time you pay for your advertising and everything, that That's money right. is gone like that. Money's that money's gone. And here's what happens in traditional evangelism. And I'm not saying we should stop doing traditional evangelism, but this is what happens. I go to the conference president and I say, hey, I'm going to do meetings in my church. Give me $10,000. Sure, they give me $10,000. I've asked now 12 presidents, what do you get for that? And all of them have said, maybe five. So you've just spent $10,000 for maybe five for one month and it's over. Here you spend less than that and it goes on this year and next year mm -hmm. and the next year and the next year and the next year and many, many, many souls are one to the kingdom. We've got to re our, our Our greatest asset is not our money. It's our people sharing Jesus. It's, uh, as my friend Joanne Davies from New Zealand said, it's the idea of the personal evangelism Absolutely. that you are meeting a need, you are creating a friendship, you're weaving them into the fabric of the church so that even if they haven't come in through this, that if you did this before a big mm -hmm. event, then by the time you have your harvest, your, reaping uh, event. your reaping event, they're ready to come in and stay in. And I say this to, to the people out there, do this before you do meetings. And instead of holding a month of meetings, hold a week of meetings. Yeah. Spend your time here. And if they call this, the, either these numbers or go to this website, they can avail themselves of this and at quantity discount pricing. This is a, a great comment. This is from Andrea. And, uh, and she says, we live near Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and my father uses this series in his prison ministry. They love it. He has been doing Bible studies there for five years, and since he has started Thunder, he said people are returning every week and enjoying it. He also bought six sets for our local libraries. He is definitely gathering souls. He can't help but share. And that's from Andrea Andres. So uh, Mary says, I want to know what all comes in the package of Thunder in the Holy Land. How many DVDs? Why don't you explain that? Good question. Uh, in this package, there are seven DVDs. Okay. And that's it. You say, that's it? Yep. All the heart questions are online at our website, absolutely free. And, and we did it that way because this is a Lovely. living product. And you say, what do you mean a living product? <laughs> um, this product is being going over and used and used. And so a pastor calls and says, Charles, I think that this question could be better worded. Maybe this text isn't the best text. We can change it, put it back up on the website, and now every time it's fresh. And it's, it's always current and it's always updated. And there will be a little date down at the bottom of every one of them so you know the, in its latest incarnation. Seven DVDs, 26 episodes. topics, episodes on those seven DVDs. And kind of, why don't you walk us through some of the titles of the episodes? I mean, these are all the teachings of Jesus. What all do you cover? I'll work on opening this up while you read the next question. Okay. Um, the next question, well, let me, I'll read a comment first, then I, I'll come to a quick question here. But this is from Ruth Elmer, and she says, I'm enjoying watching Charles Bird and others about thunder, uh, as they t discuss Thunder in the Holy Land. Of course, I think it is very special. I am Andrea Andre's grandmother. Enjoy watching 3ABN anyhow. I've been telling church members that have email that they can watch on their computers. I give them the address. So um, I do have a viewer here. Naomi wants to know who has designed the new QLP, which is Questline Productions website. Evidently, they're liking that. Well, I'm glad they're liking it. Uh, uh, it may not be as warm as the other one, but it's fresh, it's clean, and it's actually functional. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important. We actually uh, hired that. Uh, a fellow by the name of Paul uh, is doing that for us, and uh, we're thankful for, for Paul's help on that. Amen. We couldn't have done it without him. Amen. So, let's so here's some of the titles. The first one's Talking Stones, mm -hmm. and Battle with an Angel, The Great Controversy, Seeing the Invisible, The Emmanuel Factor, Salvation in One Word, Yes. Love is a P word. That sounds interesting. <laughs> the radical repentance of Christ. Real world repentance. Back to Eden. The day love thundered. One seventh in time. Who moved the mark? Unmasking the Antichrist. Testimony of the tomb. Testimony of the tomb was an interesting one. We actually shot that episode at Lazarus' first tomb. Because mm. <laughs> he came back to life and ended up in a second tomb somewhere else. Yeah. 
So he had a first two. And uh, that was a powerful experience. Uh, we shot that three times. The first time we had it all done, went back, and the footage was all gone off the chips. So the devil didn't like what we did. They shot it again while we were in the States for Karen's dad's funeral. And then uh, we shot it one more time when we went back. So uh, it's been well shot, <laughs> well documented, and, uh, and it's just really powerful to see these young people on location at Lazarus' tomb. By the way, most of these places claim to be these holy sites. And are they, are they not? Uh, who knows? But what's fascinating is the description of that tomb fits what's in Desire of Ages. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. So. so what do you foresee happening with, I mean, tell us a little more of the plans for the Kentucky Tennessee Conference. Well, uh, I, I say it with a smile on my face. If, if these are produced and pastors simply leave them on the shelf, then uh, we could probably call that project failure. Um, but uh, we, we don't believe that's going to take place. The pastors who have been filmed so far, there have been 30 of them, have invested, each of them, two days on site for the filming part. And then, of course, as you said, the preparation, which is review of the scripts. And uh, they've invested a lot. And uh, the Kentucky-Tennessee Conference uh, incentivized and encouraged the pastors to be a part of this with providing some funds. The local churches uh, provided some funds for their pastor to uh, be a uh, participant in this. And now, uh, armed with this new tool in the uh, gospel arsenal, uh, we expect that many of them are going to begin to use them, perhaps with their members, in small group studies, in one-on-one -on -one Bible studies, in preparation for public evangelism, as Charles said, that still yeah. has a part in our, our evangelism strategy. And follow up after public evangelism. A absolutely. And uh, so time will tell. We, we believe that's, that we will begin to get a feel as we measure the pulse of this fairly soon as to uh, how it's going. And as Charles suggested, if from this series even one or two decisions for Jesus uh, are, are the result, then this has been a great investment. And we expect within a year or so, we'll begin to measure the data. And we're not shy to talk numbers and because numbers are souls. They're people for the kingdom, citizens of God's family. Mm -hmm. So we expect within a year or so and maybe two years out to get a, get a good picture of how effective it's been. And we're optimistic that it's going to make a difference in the Kentucky-Tennessee Conference. And we think it, it, it will make a difference for any church and any, any pastor anywhere that that makes what we think is a small investment, I'm sure Charles would agree, in, in exploring this exciting new tool, as we said earlier, that combines a comprehensive Bible study with the important element of one-on-one -on -one relationships, discussion, friendship, and, and uh, we think that setting is just ideal uh, for, for uh, souls to be one to Jesus' Amen. kingdom. Amen. I and was I encouraged when he said to me one day, he says, this could be a game changer. It, mm -hmm. And you know, I, I do want, Dr. Santos, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more to you, but because discipleship, this whole idea, this is something that we've lost somewhere. I remember when I first came into the Adventist church because I came in from a non-denominational church. One thing we were taught in a non-denominational church was the pastor equips the saints. We didn't expect the pastor to do everything. We expected, and if you had an idea, if the Lord laid something on your heart and you took it to the pastor and said, oh, we ought to be doing this, he'd say, God gave you the idea. That means he's calling you to do it. You know, I'll support you. But the pastor uh, didn't have, he wasn't put up there as someone who was to do it all. When I came into the Adventist church, I have to admit, there was kind of a culture shock because it was, People expected the pastor to do all the hospital visitations, the pastor to do all of the, the Bible studies, the pastor to do all. And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't think that is, and, and that was the particular right. church that I was in, but it's like, I don't think that that's the way the New Testament no, paints no. the picture, is it? So there is this idea that we can get in our head that we become too dependent upon the pastor, and, and that's not really the pastor's that's job. Right. It's not that's biblical. Right. It's not biblical. One of the things, Shelley, what you're, what you're saying here is so true. It's an unfortunate truth in many churches. And in fact, I'd say a high percentage of our churches, they're what you call pastor dependent. Mm -hmm. They're the leaders, the officers of the church, the members of the church, all center on the pastor. Pastor, 
what can I do to assist you? Pastor, what can I do to help you? And the pastor loves it, humanly speaking, because they love when the members are coming to say, what can I do to get involved? But this is really not biblical because in Ephesians 4, it talks about the pastor's job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so the role here really of a true discipler is to make sure it's basically the other way around. I, I as a minister will say to, to my church officers, my elders or deacons or officers and members, what can I do as your pastor to equip you so you can be a lay minister for Jesus Christ? Amen. What can I do to equip you and train you? It's this huge mindset. It's, we're not just wanting to get people involved and busy and doing some kind of outreach and witnessing. No, they have to change that mindset that Jesus has called them. Number one, be a disciple first, but next be a discipler. That discipler is actually doing the work of the ministry. And you know, I remember uh, you probably know Dr. Paul Ratsara, who, yes, yes. and he's just such a precious man. He was telling, sharing with me that they instituted a Fisher of Men program, mm -hmm. and they'd had this wonderful, I won't go through all of the details, but they'd had a wonderful program that brought in a couple of thousand people that were baptized. But then the Fisher of Men program was that each of those new, they trained them immediately how to go out and what they were responsible was in the six months, within six months of the, them being baptized, they were responsible to have two more candidates for baptism. So this six, or, or excuse me, it was a couple of thousand, actually jumped to like 5,000 that were baptized next. It was more than double. Amen. And then it was almost triple. But it's, you know, it's, it's what I believe you said, Steve, is that, and, and I'll put it this way, we, we learn to teach, but we teach to learn. Yes. And it's kind of like we're not saved because we are, I'm I still going to say that, we're not I saved agree. because we're witnessing. But if we're not witness, I mean, if, if we become the Dead Sea, it's like when we go out to witness, it becomes real to yes. us. It becomes solid to us. Yes. And, you know, there are so many people, and I just want to encourage women particularly. Um, Heather Don Small was telling me that a lot of women in our church, uh, they love the stories from the Bible. They love to hear stories in the sermons. They love to read the Psalms but they don't know even how to explain their, their own beliefs, the fundamental beliefs of their religion. We've got to be able to do this. Yes. We've got to have this in our heart and soul. And it is going to be so much more meaningful to us. And it's not like you have to have all the Bible knowledge. I love this because people can go out who today. have very little Bible knowledge today. Like you can take a new person that's just been baptized and you can sit, tell them, here, now you go be a fisher of men. <laughs> this is your assignment. Go share with someone. And this is what we do with this series. When we, when we either we do it ourselves, mm -hmm. as Karen and I, or when we tell the pastors what we do, we say, if you go through this whole series with us, we'll give you a set when we're done if you share it with others. And they're already planning. They say to us, wow, we can't wait. We're going to share this to our neighbor, or our friend, our mother, or, you know, whoever. And so to me, that's really exciting. And, and, and I know we've said it once already, but some people may have just be joining us. So I just want to say again, as part of the rollout, we're offering uh, quantity pricing and a discount for just one person. And we just want to put that slide up here again, because some people may say, you know, I'd like to buy one of those. Uh, and I'd like to share it with others. So if they buy one, it's $250. But if they buy in quantity, they can have a breakdown. You know, they can get it for two or one, or just 150 Or if they're an ASI member and they call in, they can get it for just $100. So I just can't emphasize this enough. And I'm not pushing this because I created it. I'm pushing this because I want to go home. Amen. And, and let me just say this way. You know, when I saw my grandmother dying of cancer, she looked like she was pregnant. Her belly was distended. She was moaning in, in such agony. Uh, I, I've seen enough of that. I want to go home. When I saw, when I saw uh, 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 that baby in my hand 
that was stillborn, and it just fit in my hand. And it just broke my heart. I mean, she, they call that a fetus. She was perfect. Hmm. Her little fingers, her little toes. I mean, the, big, the smallest casket they have for, is, is, is a newborn casket. They don't have them this big. Hmm. And, and the broken heartedness of that mother. When I was called to the hospital at, at 3 in the morning to baptize a dead baby, and I'm thinking, I don't even baptize living babies. We baptize people who understand what they're doing, but here's a hurting family. And so I went to that hospital and, and sought to minister. When, when my brother was killed in Vietnam, I, I've seen enough. Amen. I want to go home. Amen. And, if, and if a thousand people tonight said, you know what, we're going to give Bible studies. If it's that simple, I could do it, I'm going to do it. They could have this tonight. Uh, there are people out there who, who were coming up against Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we buy all these presents for people who don't need them and in many cases don't appreciate them. Well, here you could buy something where you can actually share Jesus with others who is the real gift. Amen. You know, uh, and people need to be thinking not of buying DVDs, but of sharing Jesus. Because if you buy this and then you set on the shelf, but you know, let me ask you a question. Couldn't you also, a, a church, if you buy, I want to just challenge a thousand of you out there to buy one for your church library because you could take a night, do it at the church. If you don't feel like, well, I don't know if I can go to somebody's home or have them over to mine, you can just have a group to a church and then break up into individual small groups for when it came time for the, the group discussion. The group discussion. Absolutely. Just have you know, five or ten leaders there that would hold the group discussion. Absolutely. And then it really becomes a big fellowship event. There's all kinds of exciting things. Listen to Joseph here. This is Joseph Virgin, and he said, I had the privilege of being mentored by Pastor Chuck Coley. And he goes on talking about the way they first began this. And he said, um, whether you are a seasoned pro at giving Bible studies or scared to death about the idea, these video lessons take that pressure off by providing the scriptural references you need. Armed with these video Bible studies and the Holy Spirit, all Absolutely. things are possible. Absolutely. And he's talking about, he's personally given several of these Bible studies and uh, had a good friend of his who decided to follow Jesus when sometimes it's hardest to, to minister to your family mm -hmm. or your friends that are really close, and this is something that makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. The Lord wants to do something powerful through, through our, our lay people. There may be some church members right now who say, you know, I can't give a Bible study because of this or that. There may be some circumstances that they can't, but they could sponsor one of their church members giving a Bible study. They could, they could say, you can come <clears throat> to my home, or, yeah. or, or here's a set, I'll, I'll be praying for you, you know. We just need to be doing all we can to empower people. Mm -hmm. Well, I might even risk getting an elbow from Charles on this. <laughs> but I, ideally, this is given in a setting where, there, where there's more than one person, so there's people in a group, or a larger setting. That's, that's ideal, certainly, for the heart questions and, and the follow-up. It works better that way. But is it possible, under some circumstances, that someone could actually give this to someone who's not able to participate in a group, or uh, for whatever reason, that's not possible? They have a friend on the other side of the country, and Absolutely. no one's hosting it. Can they send that? They can send it, they can send it, and, and, and. I've got something pretty neat there, and you've gotten one of these. I have. I gave you one of these. But uh, here is the entire Thunder series for your smartphone. For your smartphone. And if you go online, you'll find that this is offered at a very reasonable price. It's, it's at our QLP website, or they can call that number. But they can get this and send it across the country. People can put it on their computer or on their iPhone. And, uh, and then you get on an airplane, you're armed and dangerous. <laughs> I, I am. I am because I can sit here and say, they say, what are you looking at? Oh, well, here's my earphones. Go ahead, watch. Yeah, what would yeah. you think of that? And that is modern sharing right there at its best. Yes, amen. Amen. So. Now, do you, what are those going for? Uh, they or retail for $125 right now, $50. Okay. And, and where are we calling right now? I've missed that. If somebody's, they're not calling 3ABM, what number are they calling? Okay, we'll put that up on the screen for you right now. You're calling 615-448-1037 or 615-448-1024. You can call that number. If you're an ASI member, you want to call that number and, and get the code because you can get it for the entire DVD series for just $100. Or you can go to our website, qlp.tv, 
And when you go there, you click on the store, and once you click on it and you say, I want that, you just put in the different amounts that you want to buy, and you'll see the pricing change because it's all built in. The more you order, the less you pay. Okay, and tonight, if they order tonight or during the, the airing of this program? Well, actually, during the month of October. During the month of October. But don't put it off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> amen. Um, I, I have something that, David, bless your heart. This is something that is a sad commentary. But he says, I've been a Seventh-day Adventist for 25 years, and he never feels like anyone has really adequately explained the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, Paul passed on what he received, but one cannot share what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. so he's still feeling a lacking. And this is something that, you know, these series... I've got an answer for that. ...are exciting. Here's the answer. Mm -hmm. We preach best what we need to learn most. Mm. And when you watch this with the people, you're learning with them. Amen. You're learning with them. And I can tell you, when I first learned some of the things that I've learned, when it came to me and I'm like, why doesn't everyone know this? It was very interesting to go back to my box of sermons and find out that I've been preaching it for, for 10 years. Mm. But it didn't come home to rest. Mm until I was sharing it and sharing it oh, that and is sharing true. it and sharing it. And then all of a sudden, the importance comes home. So, so you're learning, and, and this is a way of you mentoring yourself. Amen. We teach to learn, we learn to teach. Yes. Yes. You know? Did I say that right? Yeah. Um, somebody wants you to open the wallet and show the DVDs that are oh. inside. There you go. And right. then while you're doing that, go ahead. All right. So you can open the wallet. You open the wallet, and right there on the back of the wallet, it has all the topics. Oh, I see why they wanted you to open it. How lovely. That's this all is the topics. A... And if you turn it around, that's the cover again. Ah. And then if you open it up, there are all of the DVDs. Oh, you know what? I'm glad that he asked me to do that. See this card right here? Uh huh. That card tells you that the good folks at Sermon View, who, by the way, did all this artwork for me. Uh huh. They will send postcards to your neighborhood inviting people to come and, and, and have these studies with you. So you can do mass mailings of postcards, thunder postcards, wow. and if you want to, and if you, if you were in a city of say 10,000 and you said, I want everyone to have the first DVD, they will send the first DVD to everyone in the town for like a dollar four. That's the DVD, postage, everything. They'll have the first series, and then there will be a little ad on it saying, if you would like to see more of these, contact this number. And so the real, oh boy, I just got the vision of that because if the pastor, now you, uh, pa Dr. Santos, you have, you've got the masters. You've paid that one $8,000 fee to, to be taped. You've got the masters so you can duplicate as many of those as you want That's and right. send them out. Oh, wow. That's, this is really... It's getting better, isn't it? Yeah, I'm waking up partly. I didn't get any sleep left. So I'm beginning to wake up, and this is really exciting. Here's an interesting point with this. If I make another set of these, and I made 1,500, they're for sale right now. If I make another set, I have to pay for the art all over again. If, thousands of, tens of thousands now, of dollars. Not now, you're talking about... If I make eight. a new set, a, 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 new, a, a new batch of these, mm -hmm. I have to pay for the art all over again. Okay. The pastors is a one time done. Okay. They never have to talk to me again. They can make as many copies until the end of their ministry. Hmm. It's so a one. Twenty years from now, they're still looking pretty good too. Yeah, still, that's right. <laughs> I'm that's sorry, right. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, we're we're kind of coming down toward the end. Is there anything? Um, I just. What I would really like to do, uh, Dr. Santos, is have you come back sometime and talk to us more about discipleship. I'd be delighted to do because that. Because this is something I feel uh, the time has come. Exactly. You know, we've got the International Year of Evangelism, and it, it's interesting. I've talked with several people today, and everyone's mind is clicking in the same direction. Mm. Uh, my dear friend uh, that I mentioned earlier, who's here visiting me from New Zealand, and she's got a resource that the South Pacific Division has just created. And, and the whole idea is to get individual members out and get them, get us all sharing. Because as you said, Steve, it's not working. It just, right. it just 
paying big money for advertising and renting some fancy venue and having, you know, so what? People come and they hear wonderful truths and they may get excited, but if they haven't developed a relationship with someone, That's right. it's amazing how fast the devil will steal that. Steal them away. Yeah. That's right. I wanted to know if this was really true. I said, if this, if what you're saying is true, then I should be able to use this in live evangelism. Not just in a quiet Bible study, but in a, in a bigger venue. So I did a 10-night series using some of these topics. And I had church members pre-chosen to be group leaders. So I only preached for like 40 minutes instead of an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. I only preached for 40. And then I said, okay, tonight we're dividing you all up into groups. Uh, I need eight of you group leaders. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, there's the eight. Join one of those. No more than five per group. If you don't get in a group, I'm going to come put you in one. And they kind of you know, looking around. So they reluctantly got into these groups. By the third night, they were saying, this is the best part of the meetings. Yeah. Because they love that give and take. And I want to tell you one short story. There was a gal who came and said, I want to be one of your group leaders. I want to be one of the group leaders. Uh, she has cerebral palsy. And inside I'm going, no. And I hate to confess that, but that's what I was doing. No. She wasn't even a church member. She, she, she had just had Bible studies with church members and she was attending. She'd been coming for about two years, couldn't make a decision. No. And the Holy Spirit kind of, <laughs> and said to me, weren't you doing this to show that anyone can do this? Isn't that why you were doing this? And I said, Lord, I apologize. And I told her, yes, you can do it. So the first night she stood up to be a group leader. <laughs> After everyone got in their little groups and they started, I slipped over by her group to see what she was doing. And in her sweet cerebral palsy voice, she said, well, it's time to do the questions. Would you read the first one? And she let the people read the questions. She just moderated it. At the end of those meetings, she was baptized. Oh, how precious. <laughs> but anybody, if, if you got cerebral palsy, if you're young, if you're young, there's young people in this thing. Yeah. They're the main, they're, they're 20 minutes. They're the bulk of the Bible study. Young people can do it. Middle-aged people, old people can do it. Anybody can do this. Well, we're going to really, look, I mean, this is your, you, we're here a year ago. You're back now, Steve. We're really going to be looking forward to hearing next year's report on what kind of results you're having from this. But it's obvious that this is a tool inspired by the Lord. It's obvious that discipling, learning how to be a disciple and to go out and disciple others. It's God's timing, isn't it? Yes. So. Shirley, I'd like to add for a moment here the fact that um, this, this set of DVDs, I like to encourage pastors or conference administrators to make sure that you, you provide a way that your pastors would be able to be filmed for this. And in, 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 in I'm sharing this because if a church is in a discipleship platform, not only is, is the, the members or the leaders or the elders of the church becoming trained to be lay ministers, but when the pastor have this set of DVDs, now he has a tool that, that will be so inexpensive now to provide all of this for the lay ministers and to replicate that have been itself. discipled to, to mm -hmm. continue to replicate. So the investment is tremendous in terms of how many people are being equipped and trained Amen. to be disciples, to be uh, lay ministers for Jesus. Mm -hmm. If I may share this story, one of the things that, uh, that happened, just, I was just sharing with, uh, with my, my, my fr brothers here that um, two years ago, uh, my, well, before we came to Nashville, my wife and I, Juliet, we prayed for, for, for the Lord to, to make a difference in Music City, Nashville. It's known as Music City. We're not penetrating that, uh, that demographics. I said, Lord, help us to be able to reach someone. April of 2011, God brought us an individual we were able to baptize. And he was the former drummer of the Grateful Dead. Huh. And, and so when he came to me, Pastor, could you disciple me? I want to learn how to be a disciple. And then I want to be a discipler like what you're doing. So for the next year and a half, he's been, he, he followed me, shadowed me, and he was actually giving Bible studies. So he became my right-hand man. I, I would say, Bill, why don't you go ahead and give the Bible study? So I would just watch him and just smile, watch him do it. To make a long story short, Shelley, he, he, 
he, in July, he moved to Santa Barbara, California. We lost a great discipler and disciple of Jesus. But I said, you, we didn't lose you. You're a missionary there in yeah, Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. But he called me just a few weeks ago. He said, Pastor, I want to be a chaplain. I believe the Lord has called me. I don't want Glory anything to, to do with the, the music business or, you know, I just want to be able to pay my bills but I really want to minister the way God is calling me. So this is what's exciting about mm -hmm. I can't wait to get uh, my friend a copy of this Amen. one so he can be equipped. Mm. Amen. Well, this is an exciting project. And one more time, we would like to, I don't know if we have an address roll. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's, let's put the first slide up again and just remind the people that if they buy in quantity or just okay. one, it's a discount during this month. Otherwise, it's $325, which is, which is very inexpensive. They can get it for as little as $150. And they can go together as, as a church group. Get 10 of your church members together. Call them up and say, hey, we need to do this. ASI members, the first 250 can get it for $100, but this is who they That's call. That's the first 250 50 can get it for $100. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, ASI should be all over this. Uh, they're supporting oh, those, those 250 will be snapped up. I, I hope so. <laughs> and all you have to do is visit us at qlp.tv or call 615-448-1037 or 615-448-1024, 1037 or 1024. And I'm hoping, again, my, my challenge is that we'll have a thousand people say, I'm going to start giving Bible studies right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start sharing Jesus. Not because I can do it. I'm scared spitless. But I can put in a DVD and I can pray for people and I can read these questions with them. I can do that. Amen. Let me ask real quickly, is that the same number they call if a pastor is interested in yes. being... Okay, so if, if you are a pastor or you would be interested in maybe supporting your pastor to do this and putting up the funds, then you can just and call... Here's what I'm Go ahead. Here's what Real I'm encouraging quick. them to do is get the conference involved. Get the conference involved. I know Steve mm -hmm. would say yes to that. We are, gentlemen, out of time. And this is an exciting project. Thunder in the Holy Land. We want you to participate. We hope that the thousand go. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And our prayer for you is that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you not only today, but always. God bless you.